In a world full of movie podcasts, here is one more. Welcome to Defend Your Movie with Sean Donnelly. The time has come again. A champion must die. there to entertain people who want to laugh uh well that's absolutely that's a, you're right do you know what i mean yeah, and, yeah, and right. i feel like increasingly the people who are going to comedy shows are just morbidly suicidally depressed children i saw a very <laughs> funny in brooklyn i saw a very funny facebook status i'll find out who it was to give credit but it was like the only place in new york you can find some quiet is at a comedy show girl <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, I think like, like, yeah. that's okay, what I mean. Like, like, uh? it's, it's, it's this weird thing where like, that's what I mean by those fucking audiences. Like they're very nice. Like they were nice, but like, they're not I nice. have to, what? They're not nice. Nothing. No, they were cool last night. They were cool. Okay. And the audience. show was, the show was kind of long. It was union hall. It was like, I, like what hate, do you do? There's no coolness hall. factor that goes into it. I think but when you, it's, it's not more cool. fun, it's Guess more fun. Guess what's not cool? Comedy's not cool. They were alive and into the fucking cool. Union hall is not fucking cool. And into the show is all I'm saying. Fourth Ave is not fucking cool. <laughs> Let's be very, very, and Brooklyn is um, done being but cool. But there's a Luke's Lena lobster. Dunham, <laughs> Lena Dunham has exposed to the sun exactly what makes Brooklyn uncool. This shabby chic uh, sort of muted palette bullshit Brooklyn young <laughs> fucking you subsidized you dog shit. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That, it is now, it is in open air. It is now rotting like a fish in the sun. We can all see that Brooklyn is done. <laughs> that being well, said, Star Bar was in Brooklyn, let's, right? Yeah, that's let's, it. That was the last one Let's I told uh, the tell everybody what's going on. You're listening to an episode of <laughs> Defend Your Movie. We had a very weird star where apparently we have the genie from Aladdin here, everybody. That's <laughs> hey. my thing I like to say about Moran. Our guest today is is the very oh, funny Moran Kagani. Do I say Kagani? You nailed it. I Unlike nailed it. Nori last night, who brought me on as Miran some other bullshit. <laughs> I've had it. I've had it. You're He's wearing... not going to Brooklyn anymore. No respect. Peer. You're a seller comic now. Are you fucking crazy? You I've literally... been a seller comic. Well, Moran I mean has... that in a bigger sense. Moran yeah. has Sophia Lorraine sunglasses on that sure. he brought in. Sure. I, Audrey I Hepburn, but yeah. Audrey Hepburn. Sorry. Yeah. 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 No, no, no. I'm right there with you. <laughs> Sophia Lorraine, Lorraine is more of that person. Persian eye, it's the eyeliner, it's that Italian Teach section, it. it's the cleavage. All right. You didn't know that, I also that, have the Sophia Loren cleavage. Okay, well, <laughs> uh, also, let me get out. I'm, I feel like I'm going to be able to say three words. This is a fucking no! Podcast. I, no, no, no. The coffee's wearing off. Here's the That's thing. That's how we like it. Uh, also, big warm welcome to my co-host, Farrah Brooke. How are you, Farrah? Oh, thank you so much, Sean. It's I'm, good to see I'm you. You're doing great. Thank you for doing my show last night. I appreciate Sean you having absolutely me. absolutely crushed. I had a good time doing your show. I don't show. know how, but he did. Uh, you don't know how it <laughs> I don't know how it happened either. I've been in a, in a rut lately. He's I, comedy really? furnace. You I, had some new stuff. That I had worked. some new stuff. That's you what did, it was. You, were, you're, you don't seem in a rut to me. I'm in a rut. Uh, you know, in general, I'm you in a said rut. Semen. But mm. <laughs> she said semen a rut. Semen a rut. Semen a rut. You seem like semen. Well, I had a set right before yours where I I did not do well, so that that always like dictates how, many how you feel. How people were in that? I, I they were like eleven, and yeah. they were right. all assholes. Like they were like they were so quiet, was on the show. It was loud. Uh, but I'm always like, you know what? I I sympathize because I'm like. I don't want to be one of 11 people at a show either. Oh, they can, no, no, no. They can go <laughs> no. fuck themselves. Of course, give, you fucker. There are people who are tap dancing for you, and yeah. you're going to sit there with your fucking arms folded like you're a William Morris agent? <laughs> go fuck yourself. <laughs> no business. Like, no, and what has that person ever fucking contributed to the world other than wearing a fucking romper in public? <laughs> Get out of here. I've had it. I've had it with Brooklyn. You're done with and, Brooklyn And shows. I had to close out that show, which I wasn't supposed to, and I was like, well, this is what you get for having me close out and wait for fucking for, like an hour and 55 minutes to get on stage is I eulogized my performance relationship with Brooklyn. I was like, I hate you fucking Well, people. I'm glad I got to it do a show with you before you never went back to Brooklyn. It's, Remember that again. musical one we did where we sang? Oh, girl. Oh, girl. <laughs> for, I don't think there this was is, one audience I mean. member this there. This is what I mean. I don't think there was one. Yeah, and we done. traveled like 
I, it took me well, an hour was, to yeah, get there. Yeah, of course. It's like from Boston to Providence. <laughs> Go fuck yourself, Brooklyn. <laughs> Holy, and, I, and if there are Brooklyn Where listeners, do you live? listen. I live in the Upper West. Cool. <laughs> so nice. this was a schlep. Brooklyn's a schlep. Everything's a schlep. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yes. You're on That's the, the other side West. of the planet. I am. What? It's not even that bad. 76th and Broadway. I'm no. on an arterial I'm subway. I love my sister. I love that area. I love my area. Yeah, it's beautiful. You know? Well, here's the thing about. I think you're right. Another thing you just mentioned that I I feel the same way is when you're wait when you go on at the end and you don't realize you're going to be at the end Girl. and you get to a show. I got to a show in L. A. I got there like a half hour early and then I didn't go on until the end and the show is two and a half hours long. Hooker. Like, yeah, I know. Do you know what I mean? And I got so and the guy before me blew the light by like 10, 12 minutes and yeah. I'm sitting there like freaking out and I'm like, come on, because everybody's doing like eight minutes on this show. I know so it's I'm like, hard. I'm gonna do like, eight minutes after this guy. It was so weird. And I went up and I had a rough set and they tried to light me early because this guy went over and I was like, not uh-huh. happening. Uh-huh. I'm doing my eight minutes. Yeah. I'm doing my full eight, eight minutes, minutes is another thing. So I attacked Seven, the audience. Eight minutes. Yeah, what? I, I attacked the audience and then prepared myself for like a like a gra- like a Diana Ross take off in a helicopter diva exit. <laughs> and I'm I'm almost out the door and I realize I left my bag on stage. And so I was like, wait, wait, it gets worse. It gets worse. Remember when you didn't clap when I was done? <laughs> We're not even done. We're not even done. Feel this. This is what ecstasy feels like. It was really. It, was it the kind of set where like two people were lo- absolutely loving it, or was it just no, all there, of them? There were was assholes? one old guy who who I think was feeding off of the discomfort. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like he was a different kind of Brooklyn energy vampire. He liked the the turmoil. <laughs> uh, whereas everyone else in Brooklyn is just a basic energy vampire. Yeah, you know right, what I mean? right. They're there to suck your general will to live. Basic this guy, energy vampire. Oh, they are so fucking basic, <laughs> these children. Get the fuck out of here with your fucking fast fashion sweatshop fucking clothes. Get the fuck out of here, Brooklyn. I hate your child fucking sucking on the like sad media's titty. You know, it's like, so you know who Alessia Carr is. So what? So fucking what? I don't even know who that is. That's She's I mean. saying the alternate version of and, like, they where I'll go it. from Moana. Oh, okay, okay. This is what that's I mean. The, I it's, mean, that's how I know her. I could kill myself. <laughs> oh, but you know Moana. That's I'm right. deeply she into Moana. Moana. Have Moana? you defended Moana? Of course. I we, we, I, we did a I Sean Finally it. Sees We do episode. Sean Finally Sees certain movies, and I, and I watched Moana. I haven't. And I loved it. Okay. It's great. You're cute. <laughs> it's an excellent it's, um, film. It's true. It's no, I movie. appreciate that. I appreciate that. It's an let's, excellent let's talk film. about this. We talked about stuff. You said basic energy I've never vampire. been so proud not to live in Brooklyn. <laughs> oh, my God. Toilets. I'm so glad I moved a year ago. It's just, so just, for, just, just an idea with the I, wrath I, of I'm very afraid for myself right now. Erase it. <laughs> You're like a fashionable tornado just Erase ripping through it. Brooklyn. That's I think though when the L train shuts down. Oh, that'll be great. I think it will. Ah, uh, it will. It's, it's already like happening. cauterizing a wound. I live in Sunnyside, and it's already happening. People are moving and we to left, you. Uh, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. You got these like old timey. Mar- For some reason, hipsters are into old timey markets. Like of there's a coffee place are. on Queens Boulevard, and literally the outside looks. Like what you would build for a school play if it was based outside of Mark. You know what I'm saying? Like it just says but, but can I say and fruits and vegetables and like and there's coffee and it's just it's just weird to me. But like the the part of this is that this hipster group that sort of is is hunting and wants this found art shabby chic existence. The world is hip to them, and they are now charging forty-five dollars for a discarded shell. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, they're the fucking mystery is gone, you loser. You know? If you really want that authentic, <laughs> I found it on the fucking sidewalk experience. Go to Middle America, where we don't have to. Because you, at the end of the day, yeah. these are hayseed, boring people. They should live on a farm, but they don't know how to work. Right? Like this is that's a good point. Do you know what I mean? It's really like, true. They it's like, are so for lack- fucking dumb. Well, and for lack of being it. interesting, you go to you go, do that, to, go to honestly milk us, yank a tit, yank a cow tit. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! <laughs> well, let's go now. I almost want to talk about the movie. This is too entertaining. <laughs> You, Moran today came to defend uh, the, the greatest it, movie ever. It's not the greatest movie ever. It is. Uh, uh, Deep Impact. That's oh, the movie yes. that you chose, yes. which is a dun, great dun. choice. It's forty eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't know if you know that. They 40- Rotten Tomatoes rates porns. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Are you, did you watch Deep Impact the porn? Oh, yeah, no, you guys, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Our pod Miklos takes it hard in the can. <laughs> Raw dog. It's a, it's a Greek porno. Yeah, it's a Greek porno, girl. It's called Deep Impact. I don't mean to call Sean girl. I call oh, everyone so girl. I did see this one. <laughs> no, no. Wait, there's actually Deep an actual, impact. there's got to be a porno called Deep Impact. Of course. Is of it course based on the movie? Maybe it's Deeper Surely. Impact. Do deeper you know what impact. I mean? I mean, I it's like know. where they put one of those dick extensions on the tab. Have you ever seen those? <laughs> no. It's like those erasers, extra erasers. That, that sounds they used like to a have great idea. Oh yeah, they have that. For, they just for dicks in in porn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they use it in porn. I mean, they use a lot of stuff in porn. The no, you can, you watch. Like I am talking about tonight. Deep Impact, starring Morgan Freeman, Tay Leone. I'll tell. I'll give you this for this movie. I did not like this movie. I was laughing a lot of times when I wasn't supposed <laughs> to be in this movie. movie. You're killing me. Uh, I'll give you this much. Well, a most under one, most underrated star ever. One, one of the most underrated female stars, Tay Leone. Agreed. Tay Leone. Unbelievable! How first off, gorgeous, beautiful. I'll Secondly, Google her now. She, well, you'll know exactly. David who she Duchovny's is when you see wife. David Duchovny's wife. They got divorced a while ago. Yeah. She's in Family Man. She's awesome in Family Man. She's My favorite movie ever, Flirting with Disaster. Flirting with Disaster. She's, she's a awesome. Heroine. Ben Stiller. Yeah. Yeah. She is. I, she never got her due, right? I feel like she just is known as David Duchovny's wife. No, no, no. She she ah. had a show called Madam Secretary recently that oh, went a few seasons. That's but I mean, my mom watched Having that. a principal role in a sitcom, you're on the poster. There's money in that. There's yeah. a career in that. Yeah, that's yeah. true, I guess. Nothing. Yeah, I guess I'm, yeah. I just remember when... I remember, it's not a sitcom, but a, a dramedy. Uh, the dra- the, a yeah. procedural dramedy. She, um, my mom was like really into that Madam Secretary show. Is yeah. it gone now? I don't fucking know. Her yeah. movie list isn't looking good. Just to be clear, I haven't seen Deep Impact. I was kidding about the porn, and I don't know who she is. But now... Oh, Jenny Lerner. Is, That's how is, the Asian reporter says her name. <laughs> Jenny Lerner. But her lineup of movies that came up when I Googled her... Madam Secretary, sure. TV Props show. for that. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry about my Bad mind. Boys, The Family Man, Jurassic Park 3, Girl. Deep Impact, mm-hmm. Spanglish, yes. Fun she- with Dick and Jane, yep. Tower Heist. Yeah, and but uh, I mean this is not this is not a good di- record. Flirting here. with Disaster is literally one of the greatest. I, I don't know if you've seen it's it. It's a great movie. It's the greatest. Who it said is flirting in my top with five. Disa- Oh yeah, there. And there she's is. heroic in Flirting with Disaster. But this movie absolutely <laughs> stinks. She's in a league of you their own. So also, wrong. that's oh, yeah, classic. Oh yeah, she is. She is. That's she is. Classic. She is. Leave their own. Leave their own. She is mm-hmm. in that. Yes. Yeah. She's great. She's awesome. I'm just saying she's super underrated. She's in this. Uh, she has this weird. This is not her best work. <gasps> She's so good at her. She has this weird, like, trajectory in this story where she's, like, an ambitious reporter. Yes. And then, like, she finally gets what she wants, but then she kind of stinks at it. But she doesn't really get what she... I mean, you know, she, she thinks she finds one story, but in truth... It's a story about the end of the world. Right. She thinks she's reporting on a gossip fluff piece. She thinks... Okay, so what we're going to do is this. I think you'll do a great job at this. Farrah never watches the, the movie, so okay. please, if you can... Ooh, uh, please. I didn't prepare, but yeah. No, no, just, you know, just, just give me a, br- a brief synopsis. A brief synopsis of the plot of Deep Impact. Jenny Lerner, a journalist, uh, she seems to be an assistant to another, to a bigger television journalist, uh, you know, gets scoops and, and stories around D.C., hears about someone who is retiring from the White House because of an affair. Supposedly it's an affair and the wife is an alcoholic, etc. She goes, she pursues the story, she hears that it's about a woman named Ellie. Uh, she is like, I'm going to tell. She goes and confronts the dude who resigns. She's like, I'm going to tell. The uh, president gets word that she is going to release some story about this affair with this woman named Ellie. Turns out Ellie is ELE. It's extinction level event. It's that the White House has found out that a giant meteor is about to crash oh into my Earth. God, the sides of New York. Oh my God, what a turn! So she is <laughs> given. Oh my mis- God, how did they get misconstrued as a girlfriend? <laughs> Ellie, well, because you know <laughs> it has all the, the giant bitch. It's all hidden. That's a fun <laughs> reveal. Like, all that stuff. Yeah, the secretary tells on her boss because she thinks that he's having an affair, but really he's taking confidential calls from scientists about. Uh, about uh, Ellie. About an end end of a world event. So uh, she is the, the president. Uh, literally, like hijacks her, pushes her off the street. Uh, they have a conversation, which is one of the strongest. Also, conversations really quickly, the Ellie, before we go about Ellie, mm. also kind of a rip off. I don't actually. When did or, or Vanilla Sky ripped it off a little bit because in Vanilla Sky he keeps talking about Ellie. They go, "Who's Ellie? Who's Ellie?" And it stands for 
Life Extension, L-E, which, uh-huh. is, the, which is the service that he used no, to extend his life. But extension level event is actually a paleontological... No, it's really a thing. Paleontological... Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm just saying that... They, well, the Vanilla Sky ripped them off by having, like, the double... Ent- not double entendre. And the L-E. The kind of mis- right, right, mis- right, the, the confusion. Right. Yeah, yeah the, it's the, a cool the sounds, element. I like the that. All right. It's a gr- fun all right. device. And then, uh, so then the president addresses the nation. They're like, okay, we're sending... A, and this is where it gets fucking terrible. Uh, they, they're sending a spaceship up there with a nuclear payload to, ex- to detonate, to explode the meteor so it doesn't hit Earth. And uh, they call the spacecraft the Messiah, <laughs> which is the worst. It is the worst. And uh, Morgan Freeman saying the Messiah. It, it's very too much. It's very extra. And then uh, the they go into space. They land on the meteor. They fail. And it's about to crash into Earth. Not, on the, not only do they fail, they make yeah. two of them. Yeah. <laughs> they fail catastrophic. And it, has, yeah. it has been a recurring theme on this podcast that I do not appreciate movies about space. I think we've had enough. Oh, okay. yes. But, well, 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 I mean, but this is mostly this terrestrial. Was, what year was this? 98. 98. Okay. Yeah, 98. I, ha- I can deal with that. But, but but what happens, they go up and try to ex- blow it up, and then when, they, when, they, when the dust settles, they realize, oh, we blew, made it into two. Into two, two pieces. Two that are still heading towards here. <laughs> so then the, the crew ultimately <laughs> decide that they're going to self-sacrifice and that they're going to ram their ship with the rest of their payload into the larger meteor so that only the smaller meteor will sort of skim Earth and cause great damage, but not extinction-level oh, damage. How yeah. generous. Like it um, hits the ocean. Yeah, but that's, and then that's later like on in the movie. Plots with like daddy issues, yeah, and like uh, Taya Leone has a whole daddy issue uh, uh, plot path. Line. It's like her mom, her dad left her mom for a younger woman, and then she like resents her dad for it. And then what happens is when they find out that they failed up there in space, uh, they're like, "Listen, we're gonna we set up this thing called the uh, the so and so arc, and it's in the mountains of Missouri, yes. and we're taking one million. It's actually kind of fucked up. They're like, we're taking one million people." Uh, and so if you get a call, it's all by random social security numbers. If you get a well, call... Well, but they pre-selected a certain scientist, 200, entertainers, scientists. and people, people for a continuity. So that yeah, our species has continuity. Yeah, that's kind of... I didn't... I had no... But I never watched this movie that's before. That's what makes it amazing, is that the movie... The movie, I don't necessarily care about the answers they come up with. I like that they're asking these questions. Mm. What, what questions? Would we do? I'm oh, what we do? Yeah. What the fuck would we do? Yeah, it's basically... They did what Arm- Armageddon... This, all right, now, if you haven't figured this out already, and if you remember at the time, this movie was like in direct competition with Armageddon. Yeah. And I feel like Armageddon won that competition. So Armageddon, <laughs> Armageddon yeah. caught wind of this script. Yeah. And then they put out a rush script and they tried to make it bigger, more blockbusterier. And then they... Deep Impact, which was ultimately telling, I think, a female story. <laughs> mm. Whereas this one is about like Ben Affleck's <laughs> wet dick and Liv Tyler and <laughs> Daddy No and Bruce Willis and his fucking girth certificate. I can't. I can't with say- all that. It's Gert's Gert certificate. Do you know his Bruce Willis is it, it might not touch the bottom, but it will stretch the sides. Let me tell you something about Bruce. It is I've seen it. You have? Of course everyone has. Where? In what? Bruce is very loosey goosey with that D girl. Oh my god. Um, is, is there like in the gay community, is there a picture of Bruce Willis's dick floating around? They're on Google even oh, outside Google. of the gay community. Oh, you know your girl's already on this. But you know what? Use Bing. Google has been hiding dicks lately. You have to use Bing. <laughs> So, and you're welcome, America. <laughs> well, so yeah, so Armageddon was in direct competition with this movie. Armageddon, I think, won it because that was like this. You're right. They were blockbuster. Blockbuster-er. A blockbuster-er. blockbuster-er. And yeah. you are right. And Deep Impact was the female story. But I got to be honest, like, it didn't have the same, like, Moments that like Armageddon had. They just basically it didn't was like have them. an Aerosmith song. I don't want to lose. Yeah. I hate this country. I hate it. <laughs> I you know, I with my whole me. heart, with my whole heart, I hate this country. I am not uh, because I don't want to. Uh, like everything that is that guttural electric guitar <laughs> feeling, I fucking hate you. You don't want to see a Deep Impact song by like Prince or but, something? Like, the, like if you listen to the score from Deep Impact, it is harmonics. It is ecstatic. Yeah. Scene music. Like the the themes that they play are literally they're bending your your heart, your emotions with synth and string sound. It is Well I'll genius. tell you the, there's also a subplot with uh, Elijah Wood, who I've never really been a fan of. Ever since he had like a fake English accent after he came back from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Remember he filmed Lord of the Rings, then he came back and he was like kinda English and you're like 
What happened to you, Elijah Wood? <laughs> Why are you... Oh, you just filmed a movie. I know you were there for a while. Or he was in New Zealand, I think, too. He became like... He would go on talk shows, and I'd be like, he has like a tinge of British accent. I was in Kansas for a whopping 15 minutes <laughs> before I was just like... You know, I, mean, oh, I was, oh, I I was full <laughs> whoring. I was just like, when'd you buy your car? <laughs> like, I was disgusting. I, I'm just saying, some people are, are uh, more sort of fixed with, yeah. their, with, with their character and their voice, and some people are more mutable. Like, they... Oh, man, well, I'm Elijah not really Wood, finding the oh, same. Elijah I'll, Wood, I'll give you a stick. Elijah Wood has this subplot in the movie where uh, he's dating Lily Sobieski. Oh, my God. And it hits you right in the Lily. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. You know, originally they filmed tons more scenes with them. There was gonna be, it was going to be more about them. Uh-huh. And then they tested it, and people didn't like them. Yeah, no, so nobody, they got like, rid of nobody, a lot of the listen, scenes. Nobody is checking for no Lily Sobieski. <laughs> I'm, I love this world. Do you know what I mean? But again, Lily Sobieski is, in fact, she is, she is a precursor to Brooklyn entitlement and laziness. <laughs> <laughs> it's that same it floral. Comes- print, <laughs> flat hair, staring at you like like you're the one who has to elicit a response in her. It's that. It's that Sobieski effect and uh, uh, fuck you, uh, Brooklyn. Uh, <laughs> Sobieski effect. It is. It's the Sobieski effect and I've had it. So they're, they're like in a relationship. What happens is uh, Elijah Wood... <laughs> He's, I love you so he's much. He's one of the he's one of the guys. He's the he discovers the con, like the the meteor. Like he discovers Yeah. Wolf Biederman. Wolf he's Biederman. Biederman. Because Wolf is this guy who first discovered it and he was on his way to go warn everybody. Yes. And he got into a car accident. Yes, and because I think ah, either like a cigarette ah. or like he was playing with the radio. Yeah. I and can't remember what it is. And he's not credited in the movie. He's in it for like five minutes. He's the guy. He's in um, American uh, Graffiti. Ever seen American Graffiti? He, no, he's like, a, he's like not, a young John, kid. Neither. Yeah, you've never seen it. It's a really good movie. Uh, I don't and George do Lucas did American in it. I don't, <laughs> I don't do movies. <laughs> You do movies I at love all. that you're on this and that you don't do movies. Yeah, that's it's the whole so point. important. It's so fucking thank important. You. So here's the thing. No, but thank the, you. When it falls apart and they fail, these guys, and also all these, like, there's a weird, they, you know what it is? They put too much stuff in this movie. That's what it is. It is, there is a lot. That's my. A lot to take a in. Lot. It is a box of Lucky Charms. So literally they have, like, Robert Duvall's in it, and like any other movie, Robert Duvall would be a main part of the movie. He's not really a huge, huge part of this movie. He's, he's one. Of the, he's supposed to be like a John Glenn type, like um, like a Buzz Aldrin, and mm-hmm. he goes up with the crew as like the face of it. Like, hey, I've been mm-hmm. here before, and like just to put, I guess, Americans' minds at ease. Like, we know that guy; he's going to save the day, kind of thing. Which, and Vanessa Redgrave. So there's still the whole yeah. thing is that they're trying to stop these meteors from stopping the meteors. Yet. And then when they blow it into two, and where are the million people going to go to? Because uh, I do to love that inside a mountain. Yes, inside a mountain, protected, gilded. Uh, yeah. you know, uh, some kind of arc. And they're gonna okay. have where they okay. where they we have we have collected seeds. I love Morgan Freeman explaining the science to people. We have samples. <laughs> I, I, I live for all that. I said we will rebuild. <laughs> it's everything. I love all that Morgan Freeman hope and science. It's various. It's also a sciencey movie, which the world needs. Well, you know, like, you know, Morgan Freeman wanted to wear an earring. He wanted the president to wear an earring. I the, will vomit. <laughs> Why do you know that? That's disgusting, <laughs> and I hate it. It's on IMDb. Honestly. That, no, and the director wouldn't allow it. Yeah, no, go all the way and fucking put on a wig, girl. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like this one earring man no. fucking story. Get the fuck out of here. I don't go do well with men with earrings. But one of the creepiest parts of the thing is when they, what'd you say, men with earrings? Yeah, yeah. no, no thank one does. You. Oh, you know I what? You, oh. You're doing enough. You're flashy. But you know what? One of the creepiest <laughs> parts about the story is when they decide, like, hey, these are the people that are going to get picked. Lily Sobieski's family does not get picked. Yeah. And they're uh-huh. dating. Like, they're together. So so Elijah Wood's like, listen, he shows up to her house one day. They're supposed to be like 15, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He shows yeah. up to her house with rings, and he goes, they said, I spoke to the guy, and he said, if we're married, you're my wife, you have to come with me. And he goes, also, I'm kind of famous because I discovered this this meteor, so your family can come too. Yeah, I haven't so, used my fame on anything. So That's they the get married. Like, this is Children. weird. And, and Children. Like, you see a wedding? Yeah. 
Yes. Yes. And but it's like very like. But you know, it's like in the story? woods. Oh, not woods. It's like in a field. But that's how people used to get married. You realize that in the history of our species, we used to get married I very know, young. But it's right. weird to watch two but fifteen-year-olds it, get married. Wait, they're fifteen. Yeah, it's you know, very supposed erotic. to be like maybe and, sixty. I don't know. Yeah. Oh. And then and then they have the wedding kiss. And I'm so like, the fifteen-year-old, really the one that's yes. discovered this meteor and everything. Yeah, he discovered it in his class. And uh, Mike wow. O'Malley from yesteryear is his teacher. And Mike O'Malley is famous for being bald, and they must have put a toupee on Mike O'Malley. I had no son. idea that you had this encyclopedic knowledge of things. Charlotte. Oh yeah, I really I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm really <laughs> <new> <laughs> such an inspired. I had no idea that you fucking packed it like I that. Know, I know. I know. I know. I'm big on character actors. I love fucking character life. Actors. I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm loving this. So there's that's a weird thing. That, to me, I'm like yeah, there's laughing out loud. Love. No, that's juvenile. Oh, it's juvenile. <laughs> love. Yeah, yeah, I mean, honey, it's and then he like finds them at, at the end. She's like, no, I'm going with my family. This is Lily, and then Lily. Uh, and then little uh, little Kenya Michaels, little Elijah Wood. Uh, he's like, I'm not going onto the ark. I'm gonna go and fucking save Lily, and then he and steals. The, a that's not a weird part. I, that's, I didn't believe that either because his parents. He's already at the camp. If yeah. it was my mom, she'd be like, Get in the tunnel <laughs> yeah. now, yeah. Sean Patrick Paul Donnelly. Get in the tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you can't you can't reason with Elijah. You know, he's well. He's right away, man. Richard Schiff from West Wing is his dad, and his oh, mom. Jesus. I forget who his mom is, but but right away he's like. I have to go back for it. I have to. And they're both like, they don't even try. They're not even like, hey, you're coming with us. Or they don't say anything like, no, that's ridiculous. Because I think they have so much stuff in this movie, they just had to let him go. Like, yeah. Because there wasn't time enough to argue. And they like gave him a big hug. And Richard Schiff kind of cries, which is kind of nice. Yeah. And then he goes <laughs> off and runs back to Lily's house. He and does. He- and also, there's a reference to, like her dad's motorbike. Like your dad has like a motocross like bike that that mm-hmm. he makes a comment about. So he they're not around the family. It's so Chekhov's gun. Yeah, what's, yeah. What'd you say? They talk about the motorbike earlier. Yeah, and then now he goes back and he gets that motorbike. What do they call motorbike. it? Chekhov's gun. Chekhov's gun. You're right. Is it from a Chekhov? As in, if there is a gun. Uh, in that that's presented in Act One. It has to go off by Act Three. Right, right. Okay, is that what it is? That's what it oh, is. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Like there's like that's the kind of thing they make okay. the reference. Like, and you and and it's true of jokes. It's true of everything. If you present a detail, yeah. you have to do something with it. Right. 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 Yeah. That's, yeah. Right. And that's a great way to put it. Right. And so he grabs the motorbike and then goes and finds them. And actually, I thought that would have been a much cooler. Like movie, just Elijah Wood just going through an apocalyptic America on that motorbike. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. Like uh, uh, what the Mad Max uh, that Charlize Theron, who is looking a little weathered, uh, <laughs> that she's going to do. What is that? What is her name? Fury Mistress Road? Formica. It's the but her character. It's like Maxima. Oh, I don't know what her name is. In it. Vagina Dentata. It's something like that, and she <laughs> is. And they're they're giving her her own movie. Oh, are they really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So she he goes off and he finds. Her family, right? Or she? What, what does he do again? He goes and he finds, yeah, her and them. And then the parents had also just had a baby, so they hand Elijah and Lily a baby. So it's like they're this young couple, and they represent like the restart of of, of our humanity, society. yeah, yeah, a society of civilization. Okay. Also, and they like escape to a tall hill because the the Messiah came through. Uh, and blew up the the larger, well, the, the big one, meteors. but this the smaller one, the smaller one, absolutely still wild. It is. It's a wild movie. <laughs> my other this has gone like, all over the map. It I... has, the, my favorite part is like it has that disaster traffic jam that is in every yeah. disaster movie, where it's like <laughs> this insane yes. traffic jam where you're like, yes. For the, but for this movie, it's like, where are you going? Like, what is going to happen? I think they're, is trying, that the they're million trying to go to higher people? ground. Oh, okay. Everyone's trying to go to higher ground in the event of flooding. Yeah. Mm. To yeah. And then then you have Tia Leone. Her storyline, like she's chosen because she's Tia Leone. She's the news. She's like the on camera news person. That's right. That's what this whole story is. And it's interesting. It's about like her being too green to be on the anchor desk, but she gets the job anyways because she's the one who broke the story. Yeah. And it's a lot, you know, when you see a green comic who's getting a lot of shine and it's there, it is everywhere, (laughs) they might not be prepared for it. It's, it's, there are, there are larger sort of themes at play here that other movies do not necessarily touch. And for that, I thank uh, the, the estrogen uh, dipped pen. Of of the writers who made this movie happen, I don't know their fucking names, <laughs> but it's a woman. It's clearly a woman. Is like, it not a woman? woman? Oh yeah, it's not a woman. Oh, it's a ch- oh, it's all lady. They let women all the time. write oh, it's a woman movies producer. in it's the nineties. Come something on, like that. no, there's definitely like a heavy smell of menzies. <laughs> 
<laughs> you could definitely, Ooh, there's definitely a Kotex in the waste bin. It's, they're definitely not. And I love it. <laughs> and I love that smell. I'm just... It means fertility. <laughs> it means mom. <laughs> the writers were Bruce Joel Rubin and Michael Tolkien. Michael Tolkien is a I'm is telling a pen you, they name, did not let name. women write movies. They're both trans now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, uh, Bruce Joel Rubin wrote Ghost. Oh, see, another one that's just yeah, chocolate yeah, that's estrogen. The feminine, the chocolate time, feminine estrogen. The time traveler's wife. Wife. The word wife is in the title. These guys love I mean, a maybe lady story. Maybe they just love each other. I love a lady story. The last Mimsy. Girl. Which sounds very feminine it's, to me. I can't ever Mimsy. I don't have that. What's anymore. his name? I don't have that bone. Bruce Joel Rubin. He's one of the writers. Bruce he looks. Joel. He was Bruce born Joel in Kim 1943. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce Joel Kim Booster, yes. And then Michael Token, who I think I've heard of before. Oh, see, this is the the male part of this. Okay, mm. here we go. He wrote The Player with Tim Robbins back okay. in 1992. Tim Robbins is also a ladies actor. You think so? Uh, sure. Why do you say that? Because we have Liam Neeson for other things. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> they, I'm saying Tim Robbins is the ladies Liam Neeson. <laughs> That's what I'm telling do you right ladies now. like Liam, uh, uh, Tim Robbins? I'll tell you. Although, have I ever talked about that, that my... I, I brought up Liam Neeson, so I have to see this through. That it is my only wish that Liam Neeson, because you know his wife, like her brain exploded or something, that he Jesus finds love Christ. again. That he right. finds love again, hopefully. Yeah, she had a skiing accident Whatever. and she died. And, and it's all over the tree. And, oh! and, but Liam, it is my hope that he, oh I need him to find love again. And my, my number one candidate for him. Is Sheila is is Sheena Easton? <laughs> Sheena Why Easton. is that now? So that at the wedding they can announce, ladies and gentlemen, Liam and Sheena Easton Neeson, <laughs> and then I and the, everything will come flooding out of my jet. Like <laughs> oh, it's so I get so you wet put a lot thinking of about into that. that. Oh yeah, no, I, I get. Did wet. you ever hear the story behind Liam Neeson and his wife and how before when she was when she was alive she wouldn't didn't want him to do. They asked him about maybe being Bond. I think Ooh. he was asked to be Bond. Uh -huh. And mm. she's the reason he turned it down because she didn't want him to do it. Why and not? Then after because she, he has too much penis. He has too much penis. And after he, she, he died, if you notice, what has he been doing? Oh, action. All he does is action. Oh, he just waited for her to die. Now, so he I don't know do if action. that's bullshit or not, but I heard that was the case. Mm. Well, I mean, you know. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure he waited a year. What was his <laughs> reason? <laughs> I'm sure he wasn't like he went from the funeral to the, the table. Like, you know what? He was airlifted Here out of the funeral, <laughs> hanging off of the helicopter <laughs> chopper ladder. He like, all right, I'm ready. To I'm ready to live my true to life. The table read of taken. <laughs> By the way, the, I keep getting told I'm too loud. I'm, yeah. I'm, but I'm being loud too. I'm reacting to your loudness by I being loud. You. I'm a loud person I'm as well. Being very quiet. Uh, my podcast voice. <laughs> she, you're you're way better than us. At your <laughs> you are. <laughs> Thank you so much. And what you contribute is more considered. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's a sniper's gun versus buckshot. Oh, wow. you know? I will give you this for this movie. Early on, the very first scene when they, uh, when they're when that guy from uh, American Graffiti, Michael Smith, whatever his name is, when he is figuring out, like at first the kids, they're the ones who I think they, they see it or whatever it is. Yeah. And then when he's figuring it out with his giant like Hubble type telescope, yes. it does one thing that it does. It was made in 1998. All of that looks real. The you mean like the software the, on yes. his computer, the software on his computer, and you know the telescope obviously, and what he's doing, and he's trying to log in, and when the network doesn't work, it's not like the net with Sandra Bullock where it's which is like that is my <laughs> that's favorite. a movie the net the yeah. net oh, cool. I've never oh. even heard of that. Well, I want somebody to do it for the I podcast. Love, I love any time like. Dick -dick 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 -dick. I love any time a computer makes noise on every keystroke. <laughs> like these, do you know what? Do you know the what? I, I know this is going to sound gross, but remember in like the eighties and nineties, in like Penthouse magazine, when a woman would present her genitals and she would have like those manicured nails on either side. Oh of her yes, labia. of course, yeah. Like it's that shot where it's like supposed to look classy, <laughs> but it's like fully a toilet in Tampa. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, oh, I'm so classy with my manicured nails and my spread eagle. That's what uh, computer noise is. <laughs> it's the same it scratches the same itch for me is fake computer noises and that manicure on spread it has lips. the same feeling it's the exact same thing I think it's time period yeah. I think it's, it's well it's they think I'm an idiot they, they, both yeah. cases think I'm an idiot one they want me to think she's classy and she's abandoned <laughs> she's literally dead on a she's dead in a ditch 
and they want me to believe that computers make these noises. In both cases, I'm being talked down to, and I'm excited. But hold You're on, into though. it. But Sean, so you <laughs> liked the, the pro- software. I'm not really <laughs> hearing much about what you didn't like about the movie. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I am. Why, I think they. I think the, I, there's a lot this? I didn't like about this movie. There's a, uh, way too much stuffed into the movie. Uh, yeah, I mean that seems pretty. Clear. It is. It yeah. is full. Oh, that's it is a, a lot. It's I not like as to handle it. It's not as fun as um as Armageddon. It's not as fun but as Armageddon. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to make you think about the end of the but world. If you Armageddon. Watch- if you watch Armageddon before this movie, it ruins this movie for you. Why? Because they're like in Vegas. <laughs> Literally, and, like Zeus has diabetes <laughs> and he starts flexing. It's like get the. I understand that men need to find whatever sources they need to to achieve a strong and lasting erection in this mortal coil. That having been said, we cannot keep sacrificing the art of film to to yeah moments. I can't. I agree. I agree. But what I'm saying for a mo- for but if you're having a meteor hits hits Earth type of movie, you better. Make Make it a blockbuster, a popcorn, a miracle type but movie. But it's also it's <laughs> also a story. But it's also a story about our mass mortality, which Armageddon just sort of like. Yeah, and I kind of like the bottom. idea of but it the, being like you I, don't have to have it that big. I do too, movie, but he, being uh, like, and that no, was this it, is casual. Record, There's a meteor. This is what, point. That this was is what you're missing. The script's point because here's the thing: like they still had blockbuster aspects to it. Now look at one of my favorite movies ever is Signs, and we've I think we didn't talk about Signs in the podcast. We talked about another M Night Shyamalan movie. Signs is awesome because there you go. There's a worldly. Dis- That's the one with the alien. Yeah, the alien. Uh-huh. But it shows up from a very personal, very. Only, you're only seeing it in little snippets, mm-hmm. and it's awesome because of that. If they did it like that, like if it was that opposite from Armageddon, I would have liked it a lot more. Where it was like just showing. If they just did one, one yeah. storyline, and yeah. it was just Tia Leone's life, and then like. All you're seeing is what she finds out. Yeah, you got me on that one. Also, I can't get on board where there's a scene. Literally, there's a scene where she finally like reconciles with her father. Her father is also in the. Fre- I forget his name. He's in the Freshman. Uh, you ever seen the Freshman? Oh, the freshman sure, of course. He Matt plays. Uh, yeah, he plays uh, Lenny. Whatever his name is in the Freshman. Yeah, yeah. He's so good. He's so good. That guy. Yeah. He, her dad's it. like Russian. Her mom is Vanessa Redgrave, and she's like they're English. So I don't know how she has just strictly an American accent. Da- yeah, dad is like some kind of you know Bulgarian, Russian, Teutonic yeah. something. Okay. So they having a strange relationship he has a younger wife whatever it is right they reconcile within this movie after the death of the mother she kills herself right no the mother is dying of cancer oh that's right i'm sorry i forgot about that okay i'm i'm so might she, skip that. so her mother's is already dying as the world is potentially dying right exactly right which so, is another theme it's another emotional landscape but there's a, but you're not going to get me with this scene where <laughs> There's these pictures that the father shows her, right? And these very artsy pictures the mother took of of them together, the father and, and Tia Leone. So she's like, I don't even remember. First he shows her, he goes, I want to show you these. He goes, I don't even remember these. I was five. Why would I remember these? Then, so then what happens is when it, shit's going down and like they think it's the end of the world, she doesn't go on the helicopter to go to safety. She goes to the beach where the t- pictures were taken where her dad is. She gets is. the seat to her boss, which is weird. Yeah, she gives the seat I to even her I'll boss. Give that. that is a weird moment, yeah. And she goes to meet her dad at the beach. They're standing there, and she goes, listen, before when I told you I didn't remember those pictures, I remember them. I do remember them. Yeah. And then that was supposed to be an endearing moment. Yeah. And then he turns to her, and he goes, oh, and then she goes like this. Then she says, this is, I'm sorry, this is what she said. She goes, when I was 13 one time, I stole $32 from your wallet. And that's supposed to be like, oh. And then he looks at her, and he goes, when you were a baby once, I dropped you on your head. Yes. <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> What? Yes. You lost me on that one. Oh my god. It's like it's the opposite. I just laughed. Do you do, you you had a and dad. And that's supposed to be like a sweet moment. <laughs> you had a father. I did have a Sean. father. I and uh, who I, I think is uh, has departed, yeah? Yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. Uh I I had a father. I barely had a father and he departed and I'm not sad. <laughs> um and Well, you have a lot of reason not to I, be uh, sure I do. Yeah, sure yeah. I do. But uh It's actually very interesting. But uh for for the person f- who uh who who needs that or not even needs that but film a lot of times triggers the daddy issues presses the daddy issues button this was an angle for like absentee father doing his own thing it's a story that you don't hear all the time where the dad ultimately lives a selfish life and takes care of himself and the kids feel estranged and abandoned yeah, and, I mean, and that note is a real note, and not everyone necessarily <laughs> um, get. You know, they don't versus, hear that in a lot of Armageddon movies. Versus Armageddon, where it's like, you know, Bruce Willis is like, "I love you, baby," and and Liv Tyler is like, "Daddy," and is touching a screen in a room that she would never be allowed in in NASA, and she's crying, and then cue fucking Liv Tyler's real dad saying, "I don't want to close my eyes." Get the I 
mean, in Fuck the way That is a good no, point. It is. She's acting with her her movie dad while her real while dad, her real dad, dad is singing. I don't, I, you That's know, upsetting. They're like, we're not That's just going to give you daddy offensive. issues. We're going to give offensive. you double daddy <laughs> That is offensive. <laughs> and I really do like the point. nuclear daddy I like the point that, you know, now I'm comparing Armageddon in this it's just like, yeah, that's the cliche dad story. You Super. see, this is interesting. I will say, this week on The Bachelorette, <gasps> it explored this Was theme of a, yes, of an estranged father and the experience of that. The mother died. The dad was estranged. He went off and became some chic or whatever. And, you know, they... It was actually terrible. They put the guy, they forced him to have a conversation with his dad he hasn't talked to in 10 years, and then they kicked him off the show. It was very disturbing. But the storyline and hearing his whole perspective and what he went through with his dad was like, I thought, I never really see that on TV or in movies so much. And it's a very common experience oh my that God. people have. Dads fucking run. Yeah. That is what dads most pe- dads do. Dads <laughs> piece the fuck out. Yeah, no, this is, it's I literally, we are a lion most race. Dads. A oh, lot, though, do a compared ton. to how many stories and you see. Versus how many used to. 50s dads versus today dads in terms of fucking and running. It's a whole other. Right, and I'm just saying it's a theme you just don't see a lot on TV or in movies. But, Moran, your dad, did, he didn't run. He just, he stayed, in, he was in Iran, he right? stayed in Iran, yeah. Iran, but and that's that's its own. And Iran, it's fine. I, I wasn't correcting you. No, but, I know. I know. Um, yeah, he he stayed in Iran, and uh, you know would would come by America for like little short jaunts to keep mostly to keep his green card alive. Yeah. And and he would just come, be a real shitty dad, be like, eh, this whole place is in ruin. The boy's a fag. You guys should be richer by now. Why didn't you get into Harvard? Uh, and then just do that and take off. Man. And then take off. Oh, and wow. then and. Uh, well, that's interesting. So, that, so this part of it, even though I was more talking about that beach conversation, I mean that just scene more of a sounds script. like absolute trash. <laughs> yeah, 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 that seems just a lie. I thought the line I'm was so funny. But I either. like I'm the glad defense. It was a throwaway that, line. <laughs> I like the defense though that it's you know a more unique storyline than we see a lot in movies. Uh, I'm, I'm defending the fuck out of this movie. Just I mean, I, can, I cannot <laughs> defend that those that dialogue though. That's, ins- that's but ridiculous. I also appreciate that. Like, what if your last words really don't fucking matter? What if your last words are like? I, like I your agree. Shirt. Now, and then, uh, now and then I like that. Now I soul. like that. Were you know they I mean? going for that though? You were losing weight before the end. <laughs> Do you know? Like that would be the last. <laughs> would be, what a shitty thing to say to someone. You you were almost thin, and then wave and Bye. you're dead. Do you know what I mean? Like <laughs> that would have been just you just almost the meanest made it. thing possible. <laughs> you, you almost had pecs, and then. <laughs> You were walking that fine line between tit and peck. Oh, no. And then, but you know, why wouldn't it be just something to throw away? Or even if you go the opposite route and you go, you wasted your life making that six pack. Bye. Bye. (laughs) Nice abs. I'm just really. (laughs) You could have eaten cookies. Bye. I I pointed my head away. (laughs) I didn't laugh into the mic. I pointed my head away. I'm just so thrilled I was able to tie in The Bachelorette here. Oh, can I tell you, the only episode of The Bachelorette that I've ever seen, or The Bachelor that I've ever seen, uh, was when a woman and uh, and a man why I'm, why I had to qualify that but uh, they go on a special date mm-hmm. and the special date will. is that they go into a recording studio and they get to record their own version of Seal's Kiss by a Rose oh. so the woman the bachelorette in this, this is episode, uh, is this real, not excellent this television episode. have so you seen better season, television than uh, that I, it was it was fairly recent oh my god I've only seen one episode and this was the one and then it the sounds girl, like it's in Armageddon it sounds <laughs> sounds like perfect television so, so the to plot me. line that they were weaving around this bachelorette was that her father had died and, the, and all roads lead to her dead dad. Of so course. she was like, wow, there's they, a lot of yeah, dad stuff. Have. She was like, wow, you know, my, my dad really loved Seal and really loved this song. He would be so jealous right now. <laughs> It's I love. Also, first of all, <laughs> no, he didn't. No, he didn't. No, he did no, not. No, your dad didn't love Seal or <laughs> Kiss by a Rose. Your dad, your dad loves from a Rose. Were you dad a big, a big Batman Forever fan? Get the fuck out of here! Because <laughs> that's what it's from, right? Yeah. Isn't it from Batman Forever? And for the record, not everyone can sing Seal. There, there are so <laughs> many holes in this, and uh, and and again, I, I hate this country. Oh, well, <laughs> to me that just sounds like perfect television, but you know, I appreciate we, that. we all have different tastes. I, I appreciate that. I respect there that. There are a the lot of daddy things. they do are wild. And also, once again, the Seinfeld reference is back because they're the, one of the guys who's a NASA guy, one of the NASA techs in this movie, and they keep going back to him, is 
uh, one of the people who works for Elaine at Jay Peterman in this. Wow. I don't know his name. Sean can bring any movie back <laughs> to Seinfeld. <laughs> Every single one. I think there's a couple of different Seinfeld people in this I movie. I mean, it's, again, because it's a movie that has so many plot lines, it's a massive cast. I right. mean, there's the Elijah I Wood storyline, there's like the Taylor Leone storyline, there's the spaceship trying to blow up the meteor storyline, there's the president, there's the president's advisors. I'll tell you another thing to, to, to stick to the podcast. Uh, one thing I didn't like I, that I compa- if you compare it to uh, Armageddon, Armageddon has that great training montage when they're all training to do the different type. They go through the physical and they go through the. T- <laughs> Oh, work. I am looking into your soul <laughs> right now, Sean. They have it's really fun though to watch that. Yeah, and it's funny. And then they have the great thing where they all get to go out for the night beforehand. Okay, well, you know what? Wow, they yeah, have you that, sound they like you love this deep, movie. No, they that's, have that's that Armageddon. In, oh, that's Armageddon. Oh. But they had that in Deep Impact too, where they had all of these young buck. Uh, flight simulator children who were the astronauts who were chosen for the thing and they decided to add to that group one senior member who had landed on the moon before who ends up being the sort of like analog pilot for the actual mission right which is Um, Robert Duvall which is Robert Duvall yeah but they they have scenes with them they have scenes where they talk about like you know this old guy doesn't need to be on this we've trained for this we're physically fit for this right. we have faster reaction they have times one in this scene in a bar where they have an issue they have that and then there's the barbecue too listen oh yeah listen there's a barbecue too and then <laughs> and then when they decide Love that the end of the world when, barbecue <laughs> <laughs> and when they decide that they're going to uh kill themselves and and sacrifice their lives to take care of the bigger meteor they uh land back in earth orbit and earth telecom and they're able to like say goodbye to their people there yes. there are certain goodbye moments the blind guy the guy whose eyes are burned out by the sun ron eldridge i love is ron that, eldridge of bless you you know why that. i like him because he has one of my favorite scenes ever in a movie and sleep he's in sleepers you ever see sleepers uh, probably it's the one about the kids who go and they they With get the uh, hot dog cart the hot dog cart yes the one that you the thought one was, movie i've seen you thought <laughs> she thought sleepers was something else uh, God, Vanilla remember. Sky yeah. or something. Oh, no, no, no. no or, or the one with Julia Roberts and Kevin Bacon where uh, Flatliners. No. Could sleepers have been Flatliners. Uh, I haven't seen that. No, she thought it was something. Keith I forget what it was, but you said it. And it was like, it was weird. It was one of those things where whenever the movie she thought it was, I was like, no, it's not that. But I, and it has nothing to do with each other. But I can see why she thought. I like, remember what it was. It wasn't. Vanilla Sky. It was. It wasn't Hollow Man. No, not Hollow Man. It was. Uh, do you remember? Well, what's that movie we talked Minority about last Report? time too, where it's like the guys and then they do the thing. <laughs> Look at all these alien wiggity wack <laughs> yeah, movies right. Tom Cruise like, is making. Yeah, it's like yeah, because they're all friends and then they they kill that that or like what, they kill him. I think they kill. I him. think they do. I think and it revolves him, around and they get him. sent up to the uh, you know boys' school and they get raped by Kevin Bacon and his oh, friends. Oh yeah, that it's the mm. boys' school rape movie. Yes, mm-hmm. and it's the one where the guy who wrote it is Lorenzo Carcaterra. And when it came out, he was like, "This happened to me." And then people investigated. They're like, "No, it didn't." And he, they think <laughs> that he lied. They, he sold the book as like true story. I you're love just that. defending the I Irish Catholics. That. You love it. <laughs> you, I, I know love... you're on the payroll, Sean Donnelly. Well, no, they just said that there's no Sean way. Donnelly is I just love. Like, Saying it's a true anybody. story and it's not. I think that's great. Well, saying it's a true story and yeah, it's not. They yeah. do that with Fargo on purpose. They say it's true it, on right, purpose right, right. Say, and it's not. Right. Uh, I think it's it It's works. like my whole history. I may, I'm making it up all the time. My dad totally loves me. He's in the, he lives with me. He's here. He's outside. <laughs> No, but that guy Ron Eldred is in. He's in Sleepers as like the older guy, one of the one of the crew. This guy John, when they get let out, and there's a great scene because this is after Kevin Bacon. It's him and Billy Crudup. You know Billy Crudup, sure. right? And they go up to Kevin Bacon, who's the guard, and now he's like just living in shambles. Like he looks like he's like some security guard outfit on. He's eating at like some Irish pub in like Hell's Kitchen, and those guys are just like th- street thugs at this point. They like ro- they're like small time robbers kind of thing. And they walk up to him, and they just go. My favorite line ever in a movie. They see Kevin Bacon, and they go. Hello, and this is the guy who raped like Kevin Bacon raped them, and they walk and they go, "Hello, long time." <laughs> oh yeah. my god! Because you have to see it. It's a, really, it's a great oh scene. God. Yeah, and they end up just blasting on the way in the middle of that nice. bar. I, I and that's offer, what the whole movie is based. I offer on. that Deep Impact is of greater emotional significance than Sleepers. No, I, yes. I'll tell you this yes. much. There's moments yes. that get me. What movies honestly, do you because... not think it's better than? <laughs> uh, uh, the, uh, flirting with disaster. I heard Huckabees. I heard Huckabees one of your top five. Uh, it's absolutely. I like I heard Huckabees. That's my top five. But I like. I it. love I heard Huckabees. Soundtrack. I Lady, Lady Vengeance. 
is in my top five. What's Lady Vengeance? Uh, is that the, a kung fu movie? Same, no, by the makers of Old Boy. It's the same Korean studio and director. Oh, so it is. And, it's a Korean movie. And yeah. it is the best. Lady oh, yeah. Vengeance is. It's everyone has to see it. It's awesome. Yeah, but I there is there's a scene when you said when they get that when they when they, the ship gets back into Earth's orbit, yeah, they can come see them and all that. Uh-huh. Where the lady's late and she shows up and she yes. finally says goodbye to Ron Elder. Yes, yes. And but he's blind, so we can just hear them. I guess. Yes, <laughs> that got me. That point got emotionally, me. Got emotionally, it got me. Well, you know, they they ha- again. The, they this movie was definitely an emotional catch all. Do you know what I mean? Like they're trying, they're throwing yeah. a lot of bait into the water. That's what I'm saying. And hoping to catch lots. It was of quantity, different fish, not but quality, em- but emotional versus kaboom, kaboom. Uh, yeah, no, it's right. about emotional landscapes and questions versus a plot-driven superhero movie about saving the planet. Hmm. It was about hard choices. <laughs> And, and it was about and, hard and, choices. I always, I always remember those movies dissonance. about like an apoc. Like it was more. I'll give you this much. It was more apocalyptic than Armageddon was. Yeah. Like because they had they already. It was that was like kind of cool how they showed you like hey this is what it'll be like we're already preparing for it. Yeah. They had none of that with Armageddon. Armageddon they were like this don't work. It points You're towards dead. conspiracy. It's like we've always been kind of gearing up for the end of the world and now we're going to let you in on our plan. Right, because of Which this reporter. Deep. That's what it was supposed to be. Like, well, no, because, because it's actually happening. It's actually happening now, <laughs> right, yeah. But no, but <laughs> the weird thing is like she tells them, oh, I know about Ellie and they're like, hey, this is what's going on. We have uh, we have this whole crew of, we've, we've built a spaceship without you knowing yeah. and we have this whole crew of space, of, of um, astronauts that are going to work it and this guy, Ready you to know go. him. He and was, a subterranean like a uh, yeah, like human, been, human yeah. repository. Yeah, so you're right. There's the conspiracy theories right there. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, this has all been going on. We've been your drilling back. for decades. <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which I love too. Yeah, no, right. There's aspects of that. Like, you know what it reminds me of is, and I, I don't think I mentioned it on the podcast, like, I like Arca- I love Arcade Fire, the band. Do you like mm-hmm. Arcade Fire? The, no, they're I'm really old. good. And I'm old too. Yeah. I'm, we're about the same age, mm-hmm. but they're really good band. Uh huh. And they have <laughs> yeah. a they have a song, uh-huh. the suburbs. You ever, the, the, the suburbs. You ever hear the song the suburbs? Yes. The video for some reason all Arcade Fire's videos freak me the fuck out. Like they're really weird. And the suburbs, the video is like kind of like Deep Impact. Like it's just about this story like it seems like it's just about these teenagers hanging out together but then out of nowhere they're in like a martial law state in mm. their town and mm. like people are getting taken into uh, trucks and va- like um, buses and getting taken away and they're trying to like help their friends or something. you can't really tell what it's exactly about but it's like this it's like Red Dawn kind of mm-hmm. but I think that's just like an invasion from another like another army or something. This is more like they're doing it. They're like separate. They're quarantining these people because and they set up martial law in this movie too. They do set up. They martial do. Law. They're like you have to. There's a curfew. They they freeze hmm. the prices on things. Again, it it actually asks certain questions and about what how would you would handle things. Yeah. yeah. The one thing I'm, it didn't show you because it doesn't show Armageddon did not. They also didn't show that the main characters in any situation where it was like. Uh, like, they showed, like, riots on the TV, but they didn't show, like, Tia Leone, like, getting mugged on the street. They didn't show, like, what the dregs of it would have been. But, she, yeah, she likely wasn't mugged. And it wasn't, it's not a dreg story, you're right. In yeah. that regard, it's not about, it's like, not like the purge. cabin class in Titanic. They don't give you that story. Right, right. Exactly. Right, exactly. <laughs> that is the right. one story they spare. Except they kind of give it to you with Biederman's family not being on the list and being part of the bewildered herd who's just trying to look for higher ground. That's true. But they not give you a little bit. Not for the people a that are like scotch. staying no. behind and, it's not an, and it's riding. Not, no. And, it's no. not a it's not a down it's not a gritty downtown story. <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> Because because it should have one more thing thrown in. I mean it's not gonna have one I more thing. I can't believe right. everything. Thing That's what I'm saying. There's so much stuff in this movie. Because mm-hmm. I think we covered all the plots. The soundtrack, the soundtrack, the soundtrack. Oh my god, the Ooh, score. The the score. No, 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 it's all the no, score. It's the score is so beautiautiful. The score is like it's, it's nice. It's <laughs> all. It's like it's this. It's all like, it's in fine. minor. Ed, it's it's uh, heart rending. Let me see who heart did the rending? score. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> That's yeah. Versus wrenching. Yeah. Rending. Rending. The... I learned a lot of vocabulary on this podcast. You're so pretty. 
I thought, <laughs> <laughs> I love about Moran is that he can sound. He gives you a compliment, and it can sound it's like an insult. Up. That's it's why. Like, it's why I don't get that's... voiceover work. <laughs> <laughs> Try Tide. Oh, they don't say who uh, does the thing here. But the <laughs> all right. So basically, or not. not. <laughs> I I just I think that's what the downfall of this movie is. There's too much stuff going on, and with Armageddon, hmm, Armageddon, like when they're. Like with this movie, they're they're going back to too many things on Earth. Do you know what I mean? Like Armageddon, they're just going back to pretty much one thing on Earth. Like mm-hmm. once they're up there, mm-hmm. everybody's focus is on them, mm-hmm. and they're going back to like you know ground control and all that kind of stuff, whatever mm-hmm. it is, or like Liv Tyler and her dad, or whatever. And you know? Ben Affleck, who is just not at all insufferable. <laughs> <laughs> See, I I, I mean, don't I mind Ben Affleck. I'm attracted. No. Once I saw his dick, I was I was more invested. Have you seen yes. every movie star's dick? That's yeah. what, that's what. Show me all the dicks after You haven't this. seen uh, Gone Girl. In Gone Girl, you get... I think maybe. And, like, he is fluffed to the gods. It's, like, literally, it looks like some kind <laughs> Oh, in Gone Girl, yeah, you know, show it. Some yeah. president suite hotel. It's just this <laughs> This dick is fucking engorged. He's like, no, no, it's always like this. Get the fuck out of here, Ben. <laughs> I would do the I, same thing. I wouldn't want to have it. Like, oh, no, yeah. of course. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I'd be like, give me whatever you no, need. No, I'm, I'm not going to present my dick while it's, like, sort of, like, in a beaver's cheeks fucking pubic. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to fucking pull back, and there's to be uh, hand, like the tape what about that the eraser there's time. safety pins involved a and- lot there's going to be a lot involved <laughs> binder <laughs> clips all kinds of shit all binder kinds of clips shit. Just pulling it back with my yes, hooker, yes. Amazing. A corset, a girdle. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be all kinds of parting of a waters. penis corset. Yes, that yes. was amazing. Just yeah, a hat, like a fascinator hat, like a tiny. <laughs> it's gonna like a fossy hat. This, this is sounds <laughs> perfect. <laughs> It's just became, your penis just became a cast member of all that jazz. <laughs> Literally, it's going to be in a chorus cabaret, line. It's cabaret. It's literally, you're going to look through the chorus line. There's Connie, the little Asian one. The, the... <laughs> your dick became, your dick became <laughs> Joel Grey. <laughs> oh, my God. That's Amazing. Funny. Jesus Christ. All right. Well, let's do this. Let's wrap this bad boy up. Yep. I appreciate you doing this, man. Thank you so much what for having do, me. What we do is the last – I forgot to mention this to you earlier, but uh, if you can, just think of – just to give it – Go back to the the core of the the point of the podcast. Give us three reasons why you're defending this podcast, uh, and if it can be different stuff from what we've talked about, right. go for that. If well, not, so it's just it's, recap. It is um, it's an action plot, but it's really about the emotional landscapes that move in an action plot. So it is unique in that regard. Okay, uh, it uh, features females in uh, an unapologetic way. It, it is not, for the most part, a man's story. There are bitches all over this thing, mm. and that is refreshing. Uh, that's true. And well, well, I like that. Tia Leone, and then who else? There's a female spit. There's a, a female uh, pilot. There's Vanessa Redgrave. Oh, right, He's yeah. like, her there's boss one is female, female in it. There, her boss is female. Very... Uh, Lily Sobieski. Let us never forget Lily Sobieski. I'm telling you, never forget. It is <laughs> Lily Sobieski and 911 are interchangeable. I'm putting that up. What was the thing with Lily Sobieski? Where she shouldn't she do like a late night show on time and. She said something that people just. What did she say? Well, she was like, "It's an inside job." I could see Lily doing that. I think that's what it was. I think did it was Lily say that nine eleven was an inside like job? Anti-American. How did thing. I intuit that? How did I we? Think... I'm like a truffle pig for nine eleven. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. It wasn't that. I think it was that she read some poem that was about to be about can something. I see her doing that. It's such a <laughs> Sobieski <laughs> move. So yeah. she lilied all over it. I can't. I can't with Lily. Lily. Also, the name Lily, like it's and maybe the most. Lily. It's the worst sound. She's a like, person when she was make. younger, it's like this child, uh, not, she was a child bride in this. She was like getting like molested and eyes wide shut. She was Thank the guy's God. daughter Thank in God. that. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah, it's crazy. No, she needed some dirt on her nails. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> she needed to grit up, you know? There were so many like titless, floral, drapey dresses. She needed to get the Christmas molested out of her, and I like that. I like that. So your second reason is the female. Female? It's strong female voice, which yeah. you don't get all the time, and that's lovely. I Honestly, that. I like it. It's it's That's the Kool-Aid I drink. Uh no, you're right. I, I, I'm a super pro matriarchy. We all know these things about me. And then, um, what is a third thing that I love about it? Uh, 
You know, in a weird way, it's an underdog story rel relative to Armageddon. It's like, here's this original idea. They were busting out the script. The children in Armageddon catch wind of this, and then they're rushing to make a bigger, tougher movie. And they just kind of stayed the course and made their movie. They, didn't, they You're saying they didn't kowtow? Like, they didn't, like, they. there was a race going on. There was all this heat. How do you and, know about this race? Uh, it's talking oh, about and, and the DVD extras. Okay. Yeah. They talk about it pretty candidly. And, but they don't say Armageddon. They're like, this other this apocalypse other movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, apparently, there was a line in the movie. They talk about that. I read this online where Morgan Freeman goes, he goes, we will rebuild. We will do this. And he goes, and the original line is, this is not Armageddon. And then when they got wind that Armageddon was coming out, they cut the line. Yeah. The <laughs> like, they all of a sudden can't say the word Armageddon. Uh, yeah. It's not... <laughs> 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 it's, 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 it's not you know what. Yeah. Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I, and uh, So I don't know if that's my third thing. No, but, that makes uh, sense. I know what you mean. Like, they still made the movie they wanted to make, which... We, it's a plot movie. Did they with a lot say of feels. that because that it, to me, I'm like, oh, it's got so much in it. I'm like, they were try they were at the end where they kind of like panicked, <laughs> almost like their own Armageddon. I they believe like, that too. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. they stayed the course. They didn't make it. They could have made it. You're right. They could have made it more blockbustery, and they didn't. they could have injected it with more testosterone, and they stayed their own course. And That's like a, that. okay. I like it. All right, good. Mm. They stayed the course. Hmm. Thank you, dude. Thank you for doing this. Thank you so much for having me. This was so, I was dying you guys are the best. Jesus. <laughs> Do you have anything you want to plug before we go? Fuck Brooklyn. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I have a free Monday night show in the East Village, not too far from here. Yes. Uh, on 1st and 10th. Uh, it's a free show. We give, we give free beer from 8 to 8.30. Wow, it's yeah, awesome. It's a free show at 8.30. It's we a book great the show. best. And it we is love a great each show. Other. And it's literally, it's a love note. It's, it's, we do it for nothing. You weren't we do there when I New did York. it. I was sick. I got I'm super sick, saying. and that's why I'm doing better. But yeah. Yeah. we're, we're glad you're doing better. Thanks, kids. And do you have a Twitter or anything like that? Oh, at Mehran X. At Mehran X and Instagram. M e h r a n x. Yep. Instagram is the Mehran. So is Facebook the Mehran. All right, great. Any any live dates you want to talk about or no? Uh, it's, 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 yeah, the Just cellar. The, the, yeah. yeah. All right, we're cool. at the cellar. Awesome, Farah. You didn't ask me if I'm going to see the movie. Oh, I did Are not. You? Are you going to see the movie? I don't think so. It's a good stoned what? watch. It's a good I, stoned watch. I, I am I'm, shocked, Farrah. You I'm, have all you've been saying is how oh I like that. I'm I like really this. into the women aspect of it and that, but it sounds like two hours of a headache. No, with no, no, a no, lot no. It stands going the test on. of time. This movie, it stands okay. the test of time. That's okay. the other I mean, thing. If I'm in the right Armageddon mindset, feels, it, Armageddon I could... feels incredibly dated. This movie still has. It feels it feels alive. It feels current. It does okay. feel less dated than already. It does. I, it's, it, if it comes I'm telling up, you, you know what helps I'm not going to go out of my way. That's all I'm saying. What helps if you want to base it on that early scene when the computers aren't, you're not, even though they're older computers, you're like, that looks like computer language yeah. to me. So I'm supposed, to watch, I'm supposed to watch a movie because they have the realistic remember, looking computers? Remember the penthouse nails. <laughs> and know when you're, like Donald Trump is penthouse nails. All of these things are penthouse nails. Remember that feeling. Okay. Look for it and know when you're getting penthouse nails. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to put it. You know, it's like just know thing. when you're getting that. It's like when you you ever watched that video they posted online a while ago that was like um somebody just took HD like high eight footage in 1993 of New York City uh -huh. and they just of just stock footage uh -huh. and it it is the penthouse nails of stock footage mm, like yeah it gives you that feeling of like oh yeah this is like. Mo it's like weird to be like, oh, it's modern day, but it's not modern day. Like, yeah. It's weird to have, th right? That's what you mean, mm -hmm. right? Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. And you will not see it. I'm shocked at that because you seem like you were getting into it. And, and him saying the, the strong female voice. That, that oh was convincing, but it For just Farrah, sounds like, like a long movie with a lock on, you know, the space element. It's I, a it's totally a good movie. I don't know what's to wrong To be honest, <laughs> there's not much, there's All way right. less of a space element than in Armageddon. There's way less of it. Way less space. Way less space. I, yeah, and and I am kind of interested in, oh, the world's ending and how do we deal with that. I yeah. like that realistic. Yeah, it's cool. Get in there. Get right. in there. All right. And on top of, of that, peer pressure. would you like to plug anything? Just my Twitter, at Farabrook. Tweet at me. Cool. And also, uh, we are on Showburn Studios. Uh, and they have a, a new iTunes page for Showbiz Studios where you can check out all the podcasts on the network, like Fat Pig with Jessica Curzon and Frank Liotti. Uh Also, Matt Goldage's podcast, The David Feldman Show, which I love. Uh, and yeah, you can check that all out. It's Alex from Showbiz. He runs the whole shebang. He's awesome. If, you, if you're interested in finding out more, go to showbrizstudios.com. Also, check them out on Laughable. Check them out on... 
Uh, what else? You got a YouTube page as well. So thank you guys so much for listening. This was so much fun. I hope you guys had fun. Yes. I had the greatest time. Yes. Thank you so much for having uh, me. We will see you next week, and bye-bye. <laughs>